Tybitoxin Myoblog is an injectable solution for the treatment of cervical dystonia to reduce the severity of abnormal head position and neck pain associated with CD. Myoblog is available in three vial presentations and is licensed under the name Neuroblog in the EU and other countries. The Myoblog comes in a 5,000 per cc uh, vial and also comes in a 10,000 per 2 cc vial. So usually you would start off with the, five, the lower dose first initially in a patient that you're injecting for cervical dystonia. You would also use 0.9% uh, normal saline and the important part here is using preservative free normal saline because if the saline has preservatives in it, it could actually denature the protein of the botulinum toxin. So you would initially, depending on the dilution that you wanted, you could do a one-to-one one -one solution, which you would then do one cc. If you want to do a one-to-two solution, you would then draw up two cc's. If you want to do a one-to-three solution, then you would pull the syringe up to three cc's here. I usually draw a little bit past that, so then I can get it exact and you notice some fluid coming out, get rid of any air bubbles there. Then what you would do is you would take the 5,000 unit vial and today what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use just a one-to-one -one mixture, so I'm just going to dump the rest of this out and you would go ahead and inject that into the vial, getting a one-to-one -one mixture. Now, if you do a one-to-one -one mixture, in the desired dose is uh, the desired dose is 250 units. You would use 0. ml. If you want a uh, two two thousand five hundred units, you would then use 1 ml of normal saline. If it was undiluted, it would be 0.6 uh, mls of the uh, mile block would equal 2,500 units. Okay. So this is a uh, crude drawing of you will see the sternocleidomastoid muscle here. And typically there are two ways that you can do uh, the injection method for botulinum toxin you can either do it by palpation and feel. In this case, you must know exactly the function of the muscle and how to activate the muscle. And also, you want to palpate both sides to make sure that the uh, muscle is equal on both sides and one muscle is not more dystonic than the other. So, the second method you could use is by ENG, in which you know that there are several uh, different cervical dystonia pa patterns such as retrocolus, laterocolus, anterocolus, and then you would go ahead and use an EMG needle and inject, uh, well actually take the EMG needle into the muscle, see the abnormal activity, and see which muscles are dystonic, and then inject the botulinum toxin into those muscles. So we have the sternocleidomastoid here. This can be involved. His pattern was laterocolus. However, his sternocleidomastoid was not involved, but his scalenes were involved. And you could have the anterior, middle, and posterior scalene muscles here. And then also there is, there is a muscle called the levator scapulae, which is there, and also longismus, which would be here, and also the splenus capitis and uh, splenus cervicus here. This device here is a signal amplifier. And this is uh, a portable, smaller type version of an EMG machine. However, an EMG, actual EMG machine, would be a better device to use. However, this is uh, nearly just as accurate. And so, you have your EMG needle here, okay? And you basically place this right inside there and you place these electrodes here on the patient's skin. This is the actual EMG uh, needle here. 
you would just you already have the my block drawn you just attach it as so here make sure that the numbers are visible to you and then you remove the top and you want to use uh, typically it's wise use gloves with this and then you would actually cut on the machine and you would go ahead and inject into the muscle there and you would hear the ab abnormal abnormal muscle activity and then you would go ahead and inject the mild one. In this you have the patient activate the muscle by turning his head to the opposite side and push against my hand here with your chin slightly. Turn like this, turn that way. And then you would activate the sternocleidomastoid muscle here. Then I have him turn to the opposite side and I would palpate the opposite side and you can work by palpation to see which muscle appear if there is a dystonic muscle you should be able to palpate a different uh, intensity within the muscle belly and so other ways if you want to palpate for the anterior posterior scalene muscles they're in this region here and I you palpate on the other side in order to feel to make sure the muscles that you're feeling are even and you can do this with the semispinalis capitis muscles back here, as well as the um, splenus um, cervicalis muscles also. And also for the levator muscle, you could also palpate to make sure that both of them are, uh, feel the same to you on palpation. So you could use an EMG method or you could use a palpation method for uh, injecting botulinum toxin. So with cervical dystonia causing abnormal postures of the head or neck, the cervical dystonia can also cause a significant amount of pain. A large percentage of patients, which could be up to 50 to 75% of patients, can experience pain with the cervical dystonia. Cervical dystonia can also be uh, multifactorial and multidirectional and involve uh, a complex group of muscles. So you may have actually two patterns instead of one. Once the patient is injected with botulinum toxin, it usually lasts three months. Some patients may have a shorter range of effect and it could last anywhere from eight to 12 weeks. Also, the major side effects of botulinum toxin can be, can be dysphagia, which is difficulty in swallowing uh, with myoblock there is more incidence of dry mouth and also a weakness of the muscles of the, uh, of the uh, weakness of the cervical weakness of the cervical muscles. So typically it's good to inform patients that within the first two weeks they may have some slight difficulty with swallowing or they may have some difficulty holding their head up but however this will go this should go away within two weeks. If not the patient should be instructed to call uh, to notify you of this. And also, if there is any uh, increased uh, dysphagia or difficulty swallowing to where the patient is coughing or having, uh, uh, that can indicate that there is there is uh, contents going into the lungs and the patient may be at increased risk of aspiration at night and that patient should be reevaluated in the office as soon as possible. There are several strains of botulinum toxin. The, Myoblock strain, botulinum toxin type B, uh, there seems to be evidence that myoblock, myoblock, botulinum type B, does appear to help uh, patients that have more pain with their cervical dystonia than some of the other strains. The, uh, there's also information in the literature suggesting that injecting the myoblock not sooner than every three months, or botulinum, any botulinum toxin, no sooner than every three months, decrease the risk of the immune system developing antibodies to the botulinum toxin. Now, there are uh, tests through Athena Diagnostics that will test for antibodies to botulinum toxin. But typically, if a patient is getting good effect from botulinum toxin and then the effect is being lost, then 
typically what uh, a physician would do is switch from one type of botulinum toxin to the other type because more than likely if you switch from type B to a different type of uh, botulinum toxin then you may not have antibodies that uh, you, the antibodies will not affect the botulinum toxin uh, of a different type. There are many patients with cervical dystonia that may, uh, as you will see, have a delay in their diagnosis or be misdiagnosed. Some of this may be because of the different types of uh, cervical dystonia, not only with cervical dystonia patterns, but there may be different varieties of movements with cervical dystonia, such as tonic, which the muscle is fixed at a certain uh, in, in contraction, such as a uh, Charlie horse, which is a certain type of dystonia that everyone's more familiar with, or it may be clonic, where there is clonic contraction of the muscle uh, that may even represent a tremor. This head tremor could be mistaken for essential tremor or Parkinson's disease. Also, there are a large percentage of patients that have cervical dystonia that will have true tremor as well. Also, they can, there can be a mixed type, which it can, uh, the dystonia can be tonic and clonic, to where there is tonic contraction and clonic contraction of the muscle. In order to get an accurate diagnosis for cervical dystonia and uh, avoid misdiagnosis, it's important to go to a physician such as a neurologist who specializes in movement disorders, either a neurologist in the community who has done a fellowship in movement disorders or someone uh, a, or a neurologist at an academic center who exclusively sees movement disorders such as dirt cervical dystonia and has uh, a significant amount of experience treating these patients. Also quality of life is also important when uh, initially talking to patients with cervical dystonia because uh, the, the patient with cervical dystonia can be affected by depression, uh, social embarrassment, functional impairment, and negative body image. Also, when you're first discussing the treatment plan, it's important to discuss that this may take up to, this may take several injection sessions in order to get the uh, muscle pattern correct or to see a significant effect from the botulinum, botulinum toxin. Uh, also, start off at the lowest possible dose when you are injecting to see how the patient tolerates botulinum toxin and then uh, slowly escalating the dose per muscle group as the patient responds to it. And having the patient also describe to you, uh, you know, uh, the pain and also the type of relief the patient is getting from the, from the botulinum toxin. The mission of Tremor Action Network, acronym 10, is to spread awareness of essential tremor and tremor-related movement disorders by advocating for a cure through research. Perhaps someday, in the not-so-distant future, medical researchers will find a cure. Current studies have suggested associations between essential tremor and Parkinson's disease and between essential tremor and dystonia.